<laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. Tara Bachland here with the Matthew Wood Institute of Herbalism. Those of you who are joining us on YouTube, hello to you as well. We're doing a free preview for a bit of tonight's class on YouTube. And so if you're a lucky duck that gets to watch some of this, lucky you. And uh, those of you who are joining the class, good to see you. I see you uh, joining us, coming right in as if you're just flowing through the proverbial door. So, so good to see you, everybody. Tara Bachland here with the Matthew Wood Institute of Herbalism. And I'm going to give you a quick tour of this webinar tonight. Those of you who are viewing a portion of this on YouTube know it's just a quick preview. And uh, we'll put the details. Just go to the Matthew Wood Institute of Herbalism for details on how to join for this whole class. Those of you who are joining us for the webinar, go ahead and at the bottom of your screen, you will find either the chat icon or the one that says more, just depends on how big your screen is. When you click on that, uh, you might have to click on more to find the chat. I, the chat um, and then when you click on chat, it will open up a side panel and that's where you can chat with all of us. So at the very bottom, it says type message here. And of course, that's where you'll type your message. And right above that, it defaults to say host and panelist. Make sure to click that and it'll open up another panel and select everyone and that will enable you to chat with everyone. Let me see here. And I have to enable it. Now everybody can chat with everyone. Sorry for that, missing that last detail. So now you can say hello and where you're from. We love to hear from you, where you're joining us from. Um, Matt's in a new location and I'm sure he'll eagerly share with us He's not hiding, so <laughs> he'll share with us where he's joining us from. And when you have a question for Matt or Phyllis, go ahead and put that in the Q&A. And of course, I'm speaking to those who are joining us in the, in the webinar. And those of you who are viewing a preview of this on YouTube, go ahead and head to matthewoodinstituteofherbalism.com to see how you can join uh, this series of classes and catch the recording of this class in two days and of previous recordings. And when you have a question for Matt and Phyllis, go ahead and put that in the Q&A. And I see we have multiple people joining us from various places. Bonnie says it's icy cold. Bonnie Jean says it's icy cold in Ottawa, Canada. I believe it. <laughs> Judith Brooks from North Carolina. Phyllis says hello from Alabama. Did it warm up in Alabama yet, Phyllis? It yes. Was Yes, and they are reckoning, we had tornadoes a couple of days ago, not where I live, but a, a, a few um, miles south of me in Selma, Alabama, it was very devastating, um, but they're saying we're going to have potentially the worst tornado season, because it started so early in January, it usually doesn't start until March, and today was 64, I mean, it's just, it's just crazy, global wow. warming. I would have said it, it never ended. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way it is. It has been this year. Yeah, yeah. Maybe December was a little break from the storms and tornadoes, but it is very unusual to um, have tornadoes this early. Um, wow. I forgot to introduce our topic tonight. <laughs> uh, COVID and friends. And of course, I, I hear a few few people sniffling as well. Friends, the other friends that are out there. I got a little sinus thing that I've been dealing with. That seems to be pretty common out there. Um, and tonight it is uh, the body systems, uh, the, the effects of COVID on the body systems. And Phyllis has something very fascinating to present it, to, lead, to get us started on this topic. We did a class several weeks ago on, on COVID and um, basically turned it into a big Q&A session. And the questions went all over the place. So we decided to put together this series of classes to more specifically address the, these topics. And certainly this was definitely one of the genres that had the most questions come up. So I'm very excited for tonight. So I'll hand it off to Matt and Phyllis to get us started. Greetings. Yeah. Um, so we're going to discuss the organs that are affected most characteristically by COVID. Um, uh, I don't think we'll get into flus, the friends. We're not going to get into friends so much. And I don't think there's that much difference between COVID and the vaccines. They seem to affect pretty much the same structures. And um, 
Phyllis has a paper. I have a paper here too. I, I didn't review it within the last week, but so um, why don't you start out with your paper? Uh, okay. this, so I will give the title of this paper, Long COVID and um, uh, the Brainstem and Dysautonomia Connection. Um, it's, there's a little more words in it than that, but um, so that's very interesting. We'll talk about the autonomic um, nervous system, which is, when it gets distuned is dysautonomia, and we'll talk about the brainstem as well. Okay, so take it away. All right, All right. mine's a little more general, and um, this paper was published in uh, Nature Medicine, and they looked at um, three thirty-five thousand people who had had with long COVID, yeah. right? And so long COVID. <clears throat> My understanding is long COVID is to find it with uh, anyone who has, has symptoms past four weeks, hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, four weeks for a lot of people, they're just barely getting over it. But, you know, maybe six weeks they're feeling better or three months they're over it. But medically, it was four weeks. So they looked at 35,000 people who had had COVID longer than four weeks. And they kind of divided the um, cluster of symptoms up into four broad categories. And these categories cover two body systems each. So they're calling these subtypes of long COVID. And it's my awareness and understanding that this is the same for the vaccine for people who have vaccine difficulties. So the first um, category is conditions impacting the cardiovascular system and the renal or kidney systems. That's number one. And this seems to be the highest percentage of people fall into one of these two categories, either cardiovascular or renal. And according to their study about um, 35% of the people they looked at fell into that category. And we can, we're going to go back and talk about each one of these a little later. This is just kind of a, a broad overview. And then the next one was the respiratory system, sleep, and anxiety problems. And the third one was muscular skeletal and nervous systems. And then the fourth one was digestive and respiratory systems. So um, these are the, the broad categories. Um, I think there's seven, eight different body systems or, or um, activities impacted. And um, not everybody's the same, but I would say I what I see here in my area is more cardiovascular issues than any of the other ones. Well, maybe sleep disorders. Um, with the nervous system. But the sleep disorders and the anxiety also tends to be tied to the cardiovascular system with people waking up at night, the heart racing, they can't go back to sleep, um, elevated blood pressure, either a slight bit or a, a quite a bit. Um, so it's like being stuck in fight or flight while trying to sleep and not being able to get good sleep. So um, that's the one I see the most. I've seen less long-term respiratory issues. Um, and the respiratory issues long-term I have seen tend to kind of resolve their self after a while. You know, uh, it might be three, three months, maybe tops, but people tend to get over the coughing, even though they've, they'll go, oh, I've been coughing for six weeks, but but in a few weeks after that, that tends to resolve. And I've, I guess I've seen the least amount of digestive issues. Um, that's probably last on my list of things I've seen. I don't know. How about you, Matthew? Yeah, but I have seen a few. So, yeah. Um, uh, also, kind of long term, I felt that I messed with my own balls. I'd never been constipated my whole life and after long COVID a couple months later I started getting constipated which I couldn't think of any other reason hmm. and uh, I felt like it was affecting the vagus um, but we'll talk about the vagus in a while so yeah I, I there are definitely other people I've talked to but 
It's not the major area. Definitely the heart and um, uh, what was the other thing you mentioned? Um, the oh, sleep, yeah. renal. So much, yep, yeah, too much uh, sympathetic. Response, yeah. yeah. Yeah, too much in the sympathetic. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, let me interrupt. I forgot to mention reproductive because that was in there too. The reproductive system being affected. Yeah. All right, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Back to you. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, no, let's see. Um, and then I'm hoping you get into the whole uh, brown fat thing. Are you still? Yeah, I'm going to, but I was going to wait until maybe we got, you, you want me to start with that? Or do you want me um, to do, you want um, to do some? No. Okay, but okay. we will be talking about um, why this, uh, the exhaustion that follows COVID that does not seem to actually be due to the presence of the virus, but um, occurs afterwards, which is very distinctive. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about my own personal experience with um coronavirus i was you know sick from uh, march 8th to uh, about june 15th and there in june right towards the end um so covid could not do one thing to me without my having a dream about it it, it just was absolute <laughs> and um i've known other people too and in fact even these dreams would even tell you what herbs to take some of the time this was the wuhan or delta strain the early one not true of omicron but, um, uh, which is interesting. So there was like a psychic change between these um, two strains. So at the very end, the last dream I had, I saw these bats above my head and whether or not you believe that the coronavirus was engineered in a laboratory, it did start out with a bat coronavirus that was collected in 2003 or so. Um, and uh, so uh, in caves in China and, um, uh, so I saw these bats and I felt it enter my frontal lobe. And I was like, oh no, it's going to go into me again. And, and I could feel it in there. And then in about 15, 20 minutes, I felt a flash of light in the center of my head. And I knew, oh, no wonder it affects the, um, uh, this is the non-scientific approach. <laughs> no wonder it affects the dream centers and um, the imagination and so on. And then 15, 20 minutes later, it boom, hit my um back brain, um, which I associate, I call the reptilian brain, although apparently it's not, but at any rate, it's, uh, uh, it's not very um, fun. It's more uh, anger and hatred and things like that. And uh, But I'd already dealt with that with Bartonella for myself, and I found that holly was a tremendous remedy, the Bach flower remedy holly for um, for hatred, actually. And I felt like both Bartonella and COVID hated me. They just, in fact, I felt this black ecto, ectoplasm hanging over my bed the first week. And I uh, finally, and it just kept beaming hatred at me. And I said, why do you hate me so much? And it said, I'm everything that you hate. <laughs> so, so it's like, whoa, okay, Holly. <laughs> and that had helped me a whole lot. Both these both these diseases attack very quickly, right, went right into the organs. That's a distinctive thing. Um, most flus, acute diseases hit the thermal regulatory system and open, close your sweat pores, change your your uh, circulatory system, your circulation. Um, but this went right in, both of these, Bartonella and uh, COVID just went kaboom, right deep into the organs within five, six days, seven days. You could feel it in there. Then, so there it was, back brain, but I'd already cleared that out. I felt pretty relieved, like, I'm not gonna have trouble with that. And then boom, I felt it hit my brain. I assumed it hit my brain stem 15, 20 minutes later because there are no sentient nerves there. Like, you know, there's not a lot of nerves in your, well, people get headaches, people get headaches here, people get headaches all over the brain. So there are nerves that give you um, feedback, what you feel, but not in the brain stem, which I call, which I equate with the amphibian level and, you know, a little frog, you can throw it in boiling water and it's still really unconscious of what's going on because they don't, they don't have a lot of sentient um, nerves like that. So, so I assumed it hit my um, brain stem because my breathing rate slowed down and my heart rate slowed down for about five minutes. Of course, I took, I took Holly and that was the last major attack that I had of, um, COVID and it was kind of summing everything up. And 
I stopped worrying about it after a little while because I realized, oh, it's just telling me what it did, how it operates. And it told me it attacks the autonomic because that is what's connected into the brainstem. And in fact, I looked that up. This was in June 2020. So there wasn't a whole lot of research, but it was already very clear that the autonomic nervous system was uh, hit by um, COVID. And of course, we as holistic healers, we think about the, the, the nervous system and the autonomic and the patterns, sympathetic excess, which is fight or flight and parasympathetic um, dominance, which is, oh, sleep, relax, eat, lie down, go to sleep. And, um, and so, we, uh, so we take that into account, but regular medicine does not. So they don't really think, you don't have a lot of therapy for the autonomic nervous system. So uh, at any rate, um, through the, it turns out there are now papers on this. There are papers on the vagus and there are papers on the brainstem. And that's what this paper is about. And this is just a review study actually. And, but he mentions quite a few good papers in it, really excellent papers uh, that, uh, yeah. Okay, um, yeah, this is one paper, leaky brains in long COVID. I don't know what that means, but. Um. <laughs> Sounds awful. <laughs> right. Leaky yeah. gut and leaky brain, ooh. <laughs> okay. Maybe it's a, the brain blood barrier. Okay, so take it away some there, yeah. Okay, I, um, I want to start by just reminding everybody that we have ACE2 receptors all over our body. So really any system in our body or any organ system, any gland can be affected by COVID. And it can vary, vary individually, you know, so one person, it might be the intestinal tract and another person, it might be their lungs. Um, another person, it might be their uh, nervous system or muscular skeletal system and other people that, you know, somebody else, it might be reproductive system. Um, prostate or ovaries um, or testicles, you know, who knows? It, there's no rhyme or reason uh, what body system gets affected in one person. But yeah. in general, the lungs are affected in everybody. The sinuses and lungs um, are generally, everybody has that. Uh, affect one, you know, more severe for some people, less severe for other people, but it is an airborne um, virus. And so this this gets impacted immediately, but from there it can travel the whole body. And so we just have to be aware of that. Well, especially if we remember that there's an upper respiratory tract and a lower respiratory tract, because because I had um, 